Well, friends, grace and peace to you and welcome to worship with Lake Oswego United Church of Christ. Uh, my name is Jenny Ott. I'm the pastor here. It's just so good to see you all here this morning. Thank you for uh, joining us for worship today. One of the things that we say and believe at Lake Oswego UCC is that no matter who you are, or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So just know that you are all welcome uh, here this morning. It's good to be together, good to be in community. And if you're a guest today, or if this is the first time uh, that you've joined us online, welcome. Uh, we're so glad that you're here. We do have an online uh, visitor form that you're welcome to fill out, and you can find the link uh, in the chat box uh, for that as well. We are recording our service this morning, uh, so you will have received a consent form when you logged on. And also we do have a bulletin. If you would like to download that, that will also be accessible, a link in the chat box. And that has our order of worship and announcements. Uh, however, everything that you need, uh, we'll put up on the screen for you uh, this morning. Just a couple announcements, or actually one that I want to highlight, our social justice and witness team is putting on a school supply drive right now, so you can find out details in the bulletin and in the e-news about what supplies are needed and where and how to uh, drop those off. And then lastly, I just want to say a few things about today's service. Uh, first of all, thanks for your flexibility to hop back on Zoom. We are still working on the live stream. I uh, ho had hoped to be on YouTube today, but had a few more hiccups. Uh, so thanks to everyone for uh, switching gears. And uh, we hopefully will just keep you informed as we get that up and running. So stay tuned for how to connect uh, next week. And I want to just also say a huge thanks to Joyce Burney for that wonderful prelude and to Scott Corbett. They are our guest musicians today while Gary is on uh, vacation. So thank you for sharing your gifts with us, Scott and Joyce. And finally, um, today we're continuing with our summer worship series, uh, listening to the spirit, sharing our stories of faith, where each week we are hearing from a different member of the congregation about the way the spirit has moved in and through their life, uh, led them in a new way forward or something they've learned during the season of pandemic. And today we are thrilled uh, to have Cheryl Simmerman as our guest speaker. So Cheryl, thank you for uh, sharing some of your story with us today. Uh, finally, because we're on Zoom, we'll just invite you to uh, stay muted for the service so that we can hear our worship leaders and musicians, and then we'll uh, have a coffee hour afterward where we can visit longer with each other. Um, for now, I invite us uh, just to begin our service as we usually do by lighting our peace candle, and uh, this is a way that we just center ourselves on the peace that we long for in our own hearts, in our community, and in our world. And especially with so many uh, events happening in our world this week, and particularly thinking about uh, all the upheaval in Afghanistan, we know how much uh, God's peace is needed. So let us pray for peace as we light the candle. And then we also share in our practice of statio, which is a holy pause. And this is just a moment where we quiet ourselves and center ourselves on the spirit of God, who is inside each one of us, who binds us together as a family of faith, even in this virtual space, and who uh, just continues to be with us and make us the beloved community. 
So let us open ourselves to the spirit among us. Please join me in our call to worship. Beloved of God, welcome to worship. Welcome from your homes. Welcome in this sanctuary. We gather today knowing we are one in the spirit. Our creator unites us in love and calls us to share that love with others. May we open ourselves to God's spirit moving in and through us. spirit of prayer. Loving God, you fill all things with a fullness and hope that we can never comprehend. Thank you for leading us into a time where more of reality is being unveiled for us all to see. We pray that you will take away our natural temptation for cynicism, denial, fear, and despair. Help us to have the courage to awaken to greater truth, greater humility, and greater care for one another. May we place our hope in what matters and what lasts, trusting in your eternal presence and love. Listen to our heart's longings for the the healing of our suffering world. We offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. Amen. Our first reading is from Galatians 3, 26 through 29. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Our second reading is from 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 13. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide. These three, 
and the greatest of these is love. Our final reading is an excerpt from the Baha'i Prayers and Meditation. Thou hast created all humanity from the same stock. Thou hast decreed that all shall belong to the same household. In thy holy presence, they are all thy servants, and all humankind are sheltered beneath thy tabernacle. All have gathered together at thy table of bounty. All are illumined through the light of thy providence. O thou kind Lord, unite all. Let the religions agree and make the nations one, so that they may see each other as one family and the whole earth as one home. May they all live together in perfect harmony. O God, raise aloft the banner of the oneness of humankind. This is the word of God for the people of God. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Cheryl Zimmerman, and I'm delighted to be here uh, speaking with you today. I thought I'd touch on a couple of different topics. Number one, just the craziness of the pandemic. I feel as if we've been in a big reality show, not a good one, <laughs> but a reality show of some type for the past 18 or more months. So, um, And also then I'll follow up to speak about my faith of my journey of faith at, and how I became a Baha'i, how I came to learn about the Baha'i faith, which was much later in life. I didn't, I'd never heard of it till I was, uh, until my daughter went to college. So anyway, um, I think what I've really, uh, one thing I've really learned um, during the pandemic is how fortunate I am. I've always been so lucky in life to have had lots of choices, but in the pandemic, you know, it almost seemed like a game or a little bit, an adventure at first, like, um, sheltering in place. And it soon uh, became not so much fun, of course, but my life didn't really change that much because I've lived alone for many years. And um, so I kind of used to sheltering in place and I never shop. So I don't miss shopping. I, I in fact, I detest shopping, but um, only going to the grocery store. So I really did not change, but it made me realize again, how extremely fortunate I am. And um, this song, I thought I'd read a couple of lines from a Judy Collins song that I just love. It's called The Fallow Way. And it's just beautiful if you have a chance and wanna um, uh, listen to it on YouTube, it's easy to find. So just a few lines from it, because I have felt that I've been in a, in a way more fallow than usual because I'm not out running around going to meetings a lot of Zoom meetings from home, but um, anyway, and if you know a little farming vocabulary, to for a field to lie fallow is for it to, to rest, to let the soil recover and, and get rest. So um, this is uh, a few lines from, um, from the fallow way. I'll learn to love the fallow way when winter draws the valley down and stills the rivers in their storm and freezes all the little brooks, time when our steps slow to the song. As sure as time, as sure as snow, as sure as moonlight, wind and stars, the fallow time will fall away and sun will bring an April day and I will yield to summer's way. So um, I guess if we're, we're, most of us, we're trying to keep our minds active. So that's not really fallow, but it just kind of feels that way sometimes. Um, and regarding my faith journey um, and how I came to learn about the Baha'i faith and become a Baha'i, um, it probably just started when I was a little kid with five kids. My parents didn't have time to worry what we were thinking about, but we went to Sunday school. You never, ever skipped church and Sunday school. It just was unthinkable. I mean, maybe if you had the measles, you might miss one Sunday, but uh, we went and I think my parents thought, well, that's enough. They're getting their grounding because every single Sunday they are in church and Sunday school. Um, and then, but I, I felt myself getting mixed messages. Even by the time I was like four or five years old, I thought, well, uh, Jesus is supposed to love all the children in the world. And I had this cloth map with little children caricatures uh, all over the world. It was a nice world map. And I looked at that very often and I thought, okay, these children cannot all be Christians. <laughs> so, um, and I didn't have a big vocabulary when I was four or five years old to, to think with, but, um, but I just thought if God would do that, then he's not fair. God's that's not fair for uh, the only way to, to God, the only pathway to God to be Jesus. That just wouldn't be right if that's the only way. So I just, I made my bargain with God when I was about five years old saying, okay, God, um, 
you either, if you don't want all the kids in the world, no matter what their culture and religion is, then you don't want me with you either. So anyway, so that was how my child's mind was thinking. But, but I was lucky. I loved, I actually loved church and Sunday school and vacation Bible school, never missed it. Um, and I enjoyed it because in a small town in Indiana, your friend, you did everything with your friends. I mean, everything. You went to church with your friends. You went to junior choir with your friends and Sunday school. Everything was done with your friends. And so that made it, of course, much more fun. But I did, uh, so having hardly skipped a single Sunday until I was 18 and went away to college, I went to Indiana University in Bloomington, um, <laughs> I thought, okay, I'm done. I've had enough church, 18 years worth of church, and I've, that's, that's enough for the rest of my lifetime. So I, uh, so, and I didn't. And then I got busy, had my two children, um, Beth and Mike, and, you know, super, super busy, and I didn't want to take then I didn't want to impose any of anyone else's, not only not my own beliefs on them, but I didn't want to impose any preacher's beliefs onto them. And because that's kind of what I had grown up with. Um, so raised kids, busy, busy, busy. And then um, they grew up and I became less busy. Uh, and so I started taking my parents to church every Sunday. I've, I lived close enough that I could drive there in half an hour and take them to church and Sunday school. And I just, I, uh, with, enjoyed being back with people I'd grown up with. These are people who I'd played in the sandbox with at church. And, and so I really enjoyed that. And of course I had missed the music. I didn't realize how much I'd missed church music, the beautiful hymns. So if I couldn't, if I didn't want to listen to the preacher, I would just flip through the hymn book and uh, re-memorize re some old songs. I did that a lot actually. <laughs> so, but uh, anyway, so but then, um, at, of course, eventually, my daughter, Beth, graduated from high school, went off to Northwestern University, and there she met uh, her future husband, Ramin, and he had grown up a Baha'i. And since I had brought up Beth with, without any religious, it, you know, roots in any specific religion, um, I had told my kids, read the Bible, read, read both the Old or Hebrew Testament and read the New or the Christian Testament, because those two books have really shaped the world, and they're very important. A lot of history, a lot of good lessons in them. So read them. So I encouraged that, but I just didn't take them to church. So anyway, um, so Beth uh, met Ramin, her future husband, and um, she started to learn uh, about his the Baha'i faith from him. And I, at that point, that's the first I had heard of the Baha'i faith. But I'd been on church for so long, I wasn't really studying. Uh, I wasn't really studying religion during that twenty or so years. So um, so she came home talking about it. They became better and better friends. Then they started to date and then they became engaged and they married in the Baha'i temple right there on the, in Wilmette, north of uh, Northwestern University. So I thought if she's becoming a Baha'i, I need to read about this. <laughs> so, and I did, I started reading and it really, so much about the Baha'i faith appealed to my sense of unity and justice, social and racial justice and equality and, and, uh, and the inequalities all, all over the world, not just in this country. So um, the, the main thing, the one main basic principle is the um, progressive revelation, meaning that, which appealed to me, I said, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I had never heard the phrase progressive revelation until I started reading about the Baha'i faith, but I thought that the idea is that there've been many teachers, there've been many great, you know, appearances of the, the Godhead in human form to lead people. They've just, they've had different names and they have come at different times in human history. So um, I thought, yep, that's this, that I just really uh, enjoyed and appreciated that idea. And some of the other, they have certain principles that sound logical and they, they make so much sense. Uh, so you think they seem obvious, but the Baha'is specifically state these principles. Uh, and since they st being stated back in the 1800s, that was pretty early for some of these to be, and pretty uh, revolutionary back in the 1800s when the Baha'i faith was founded. So, you know, the oneness of God, the unity of all humankind, all of us, uh, elimination of prejudice, equality of men and women, like women are not in any way inferior as they still are, still are considered in some countries, but there's absolutely no difference in their value. Um, harmony, uh, the agreement of science and religion, just because we don't understand it, 
uh, we are finding out more things all the time. And the idea is that science absolutely and religion are in agreement. Um, independent investigation of truth, which appealed to me a lot too. The elimination of extremes of wealth and poverty. Now who, you know, there are a few people would argue with that. <laughs> uh, but, um, and then uh, the spiritual solutions to economic problems and universal education. If you don't have universal literacy and universal education, how can you do investigation, uh, independent investigation of truth? So, and a, a favorite uh, instructive verse of mine has always been since I first read it years and years ago, consort with the followers of all religions in a spirit of friendliness and fellowship. Do not proselytize. If some, if it's fine to teach about your faith, but you never preach at somebody and try to convince them that your faith is the right one. Um, so, I think that I there, there's a lot that's I can't know, and I made my peace with that probably well long time ago. That I can't know things. There are many things that are unknowable, and it. I'm going to end with um, a few lines from uh, a really cute song that Sharon Davis introduced me to years ago, um, and it seems appropriate to end with this because it kind of sums up the way I felt for a long time. It's called Let the Mystery Be is the name of the song by, uh, by Iris Dement. So just a little, one little verse of it. Everybody is a wondering what and where they all came from. Everybody is a worrying about where they're gonna go when the whole thing's done. But no one knows for certain, and so it's all the same to me. I think I'll just let the mystery be. And that's kind of my philosophy. There's let the mystery be, but, but I do believe in a creator. That's uh, of some type. So <laughs> thanks for listening. It's been a pleasure to be here with you this, this morning. so much, Cheryl, for uh, sharing your words and some of your faith journey with us. I just, uh, I love hearing your journey of faith. And, um, you know, for those of you that don't know, Cheryl is, she's Baha'i, but so involved here. She's been involved with Beit Havarim. She participates in uh, scripture studies with a synagogue back in New Jersey and just a uh, a student of the world and a student of all faiths. And um, as you shared those Baha'i principles, Cheryl, um, it just remind me of all the ways that I think those principles resonated with many of us. And so there are just so many universal principles about love and justice and equality that many of us long for. And so I just thank you for the ways that you bring that spirit to our congregation and to our, uh, and to our community. Well, friends, we come now to our time of prayer when we have a chance to uh, just pray with and for each other. And so I will offer specific intercessions on our behalf. Each one will end, uh, as you can see on your screen, with the words, God, in your love. And I invite you to respond here our prayer. On the last intercession, I'll leave room for you to add your own prayers, which you can do uh, silently where you are. Uh, you can also put them in the chat if you'd like to share them uh, with our community this morning. And the chat, it will be able to be seen by everybody here on the uh, on the worship service this morning. But if you would like your prayer shared more broadly, you're welcome to uh, send a note to our prayer chain and that will go out uh, beyond just this group to our wider prayer chain. And so the link is in your um, chat box and you can also find it on our homepage, LOUCC 
www.ghostsofthecenter.org. Uh, so now let us join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Oh, gracious spirit, we thank you that you are the one who binds us together across differences of race or class or gender, culture, faith, that you help us to remember that we are all your beloved children, made in your image and loved beyond measure. We thank you especially for Cheryl, for the ways that you have moved in and through her life, and for her reminder today of the vastness and the beauty of your call. God, in your love, hear our prayer. God, we thank you for our own lives and spiritual journeys, for the way that we are always evolving and learning and growing. As our scripture said, we see through the mirror dimly, but one day we shall see face to face. And so just continue to guide us on our own journeys of growth. Help us to let go of whatever barriers we put in the way between us and you, between us and each other and just help us to continue to become the people and the community that you have called us to be. God, in your love, hear our prayer. God, we remember today all who are facing physical illness, mental health struggles, and anguish of the spirit. We pray that your strength and courage would be with them and be with all of us who need your care and hope this day. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Oh God, we pray today for the situation in Afghanistan, for all who are there, for all who have fled, for all who are worried about family and friends. We pray for the Afghan leaders and the leaders of the world that you would give them wisdom and help make a way for peace. We give you thanks for all who have sought to bring peace to that region, all who have sought to bring humanitarian aid. And we pray especially for all who have served in Afghanistan, our active military and our veterans. And we think especially this morning of Jean Bradley's son, Brian, who has been there this week, who's safe as of now, but we pray for him and all of his uh, military siblings. God, we pray for your spirit of love, of justice, of peace, of hope to prevail in the midst of this difficult situation. God, in your love, hear our prayer. And finally, God, we pray for our earth, for our fragile planet home. We pray for just its strength and resources. We pray that you would make us better caretakers and stewards of this planet. And we pray especially for those who are affected by natural disasters. And today we especially remember the people of Haiti in the wake of last week's earthquake. And we remember all the people in New York and New England who are uh, bracing for the effects of Hurricane Henri. And we just pray for their safety and well being. God, in your love, hear our prayer. And now we pray for those prayers closest to our own hearts, which we offer to you where we are or that we place in the chat box. God, in your love, hear our prayer. Well, Spirit of life, we thank you for your presence that is in us and among us in all those prayers that we have shared this morning. We pray that you would continue to be with us, continue to move us into greater unity and connection with each other. 
And we pray all of this in the name of Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven. The hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. Well, friends, as we come to our time of offering, I give thanks for your generosity, which supports all the missions and the ministries of our church. And as I think about uh, Cheryl's message of uh, unity and connection, I'm just grateful for the connections that we have across faiths, uh, even here at LOUCC. And in particular, I'm really grateful for the partnership that we have with Beit Havarim, our uh, Reformed Jewish sister congregation. Many of you know we've shared space with them for well over a dozen years, and our ministries in that time have grown just from essentially sharing space to sharing mission programs, uh, to worship together, to uh, scripture studies and adult ed. And now we have some joint teams with our green team and our COVID team. And during the last year, Beit Havarim has been able to build an office here on the property. And it's just a joy for me. Now I get to see Rabbi Berg every week. We run into each other in the hallways, get to say hello, and just continue the, to nurture those connections uh, between our congregations. So I just want to thank you for your generosity, which allows us to have this partnership, to have this space to share, to be able to do all of these ministries and programs together. And so I would just want to thank you. Uh, many of you give regularly that allows us to support this endeavor. And if you would like to give today, you can do so. Uh, the information's on your screen. You can give online at our website, loucc.org. Uh, there's also a link in the chat box. You're also welcome to text to give at the number on your screen. And as always, uh, you're welcome to send a check to the church. So thank you so much uh, for your generosity.
you so much for joining us for worship today. And I hope that we'll see you all again uh, next week at 1030 a.m. Pacific time. And uh, in just a second, I'm going to offer a blessing. And then uh, Joyce will play a postlude for us. And after that, everyone who would like is welcome to uh, stay online and join us in a Zoom coffee hour. Uh, that will be right here on the same link. We'll have a chance to visit with each other and uh, just uh, find out what's happening in our lives uh, this week. So please uh, stay for that. And now, uh, and, oh, and I guess if you need to leave before then, um, please feel free to do that after our blessing or after the pulse load. And now I invite you to receive this blessing. Friends, let us go now as a people united in Christ to reconcile what is broken, to heal what is divided, to bring together what is torn apart. And may the unifying spirit of God move among us, give us eyes to see God's spirit and belovedness in each and every person that we meet. Go in peace to love and serve. Amen. Thank you.